Let's talk a little bit about retirement since you just brought that up, the behavior. We know our behavior changes as our biases changes and our biases change as we look at things. At my age, I, you know, my retirement was not to retire. And the reason, you know, I, ever since I started believing and thinking that God, you know, work is a form of, of discipline, but it's also a form of worship for God. Matter of fact, the word worship is in the word work. But, and so it is our way to, to stay busy, be productive, and reproduce, but it also gives us the opportunity to interface with other people, and that's what we're supposed to do. So I never thought much about retirement as I may should have. I did plan for it, but retirement has not yet come, and at my age of 85, I'm looking forward to it not being too long. But anyway, as far as retirement, one option is to keep working, yeah. and that doesn't stop you from retiring because you're not working for retirement, you're working to make a difference. But my point is that biases change, and yes, investment patterns change out of that. But, you know, I think that, and I say this in, in modesty, but I've enjoyed giving rather than accumulating uh, all the time. When, when uh, I set out my goals when I was coming out of the service when I was about 26, and I said I wanted to retire at 49, and that was, whatever it was, it was 25 years. And I said at, at what my income now is, I want it to have doubled. Well, the truth is that wasn't enough, you know, <laughs> in that many years, 25, more than double. But in any way, I reached that goal at, at 59 and was ready, no, 49, I was ready to, and could have retired. But then I made, I, I was, I made a great big investment. I didn't need to. I didn't, it wasn't a reason to, and I lost a lot of money. So maybe that was God's way of keeping me in the marketplace, but because it was at that time, not too long after that, he called me into the ministry. So, you know, my point is you, you go with where you are with good discipline and system, system good systems, and uh, it'll pay off. And, you know, the, the, the great thing, too, Dr. Crum, is, you know, that through the years, we've changed our, our language. We, we're, we're moving. Uh, I, I won't say we're moving away from the language of retirement, but it's changing. We now refer to it many times as life cycle planning. Yes. My, this, we're the cycle of life. And because years ago, um, retirement meant you there was a there was a destination place where you stopped. You just that was it. Uh, you stopped working. And what you're hoping for is to have enough money to then just live without working. And, and we found out that that's not feasible for a lot of people uh, for a lot of reasons. For one thing, um, you know, people get to, to 65, the age that we've always considered retirement. Of course, we're moving that back and longer. But people get to because of health care, because of uh, the, the things were being healthier. They get to uh, 67 years of age and they don't, I still feel good. I want to work a little bit, as you said. Yeah. And so retirement is not what it used to be when we sit down with people and planning that you just go, man, just accumulate as much money as you can and, you know, hope that that's enough. And then when you retire, live real prudent. And so it's changed drastically in this industry. And we refer to it now more as life cycle planning. We're planning for that cycle where maybe your, your work related income ceases or slows down or mm -hmm. diminishes a little bit. Uh, and we change that. But there's a lot of strategies that give people, you know, hope. And uh, we, we always say in this business, hope is not a plan. You've got to have things in, in, in place. But it's important to understand that there's a lot of tools and things. And working longer is, is one of them. And maybe you slow down a little bit and you get a better work-life uh, balance. But that's a great part of when people retire now that are to start looking towards that retirement that we try to kind of change the mentality a little bit and say, listen, it's not just about accumulating a great big amount of money. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. I hope there are some things that can really help you to get investing or keep investing. Uh, that is our desire here. I wanted to make quick mention of HelpMeInvest.com. HelpMeInvest.com. An organization that we've put together, uh, there's no fees, there's, there's no uh, products to sell you. It is literally designed to help you invest, to become a better investor. So you can go there, 
set up an appointment for 30 minutes. We'll spend some time with you. We'll go through your portfolio. We'll help you get started wherever you're at. Helpmeinvest.com. I hope you'll take advantage of it. I hope that you will continue to send in your questions. Um, they, they mean a lot to us because uh, we can talk about a lot of things. But what we really want to do is find out what's important to you, uh, the level of understanding, the questions that you have. So hopefully that we can add value to your investment knowledge and that you can increase and grow in that and, uh, and stay curious and read as much as you can, get as much information. But when you have a question, please feel free to just uh, send that in to us. Send those questions in because we really do enjoy them and, and answering them helps us to make sure that we're being relevant and pertinent to you.